Well, good morning, uh, Fred. Thank you very much for that introduction. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Barry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, of course, it's given me great pleasure uh, to be here to speak to you. Uh, you are very hardworking people. You, you, you get up so early and, uh, and get off at 8, 8.40 or something, 8.45. Uh, special welcome to all of you since you have come a long way to Hong Kong. Uh, it's our pride that you choose to maintain such a close ties to Hong Kong. Uh, I know I have, how much time do I have? How much time I know? Okay, so, you know, professor always asks how much time the students give them. <laughs> you know, usually students want to get, want to get out of the classroom earlier. But what I think I would do, I don't want to give, I have, a, I have a speech here, I would try to go through some of that, but I may not want to give you the whole speech. I really want to have a dialogue. As, uh, as I walk in, Fred mentioned that maybe having exchange of views, this discussion may be, may be good for your crowd, and, and after all, it's a very early morning, you don't really want to get into a very long, boring speech. But before I get into the dialogue, I would like to update you about what Hong Kong is doing, how we are doing, perhaps just before the financial turmoil. Because we talk about financial market development, and a lot of the stuff that we are doing, actually, of course, are put now sort of delay, or, uh, uh, or we run into, into some, some obstacles, uh, in, in, of course, in the face of financial turmoil. But I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to report to you, Hong Kong has done very well in financial services area. Uh, as of the end of August 08, our stock market was still the sixth largest in the world and the second largest in Asia in terms of the market capitalization. And Hong Kong is ranked number one in both the uh, derivative bonds turnover and Asia stock options market. We are second in the exchange traded funds and the fifth in the total equity raised for our stock market. In 2007, we were voted the derivative exchange of the year by Asia Risk. That's, that's about stock market, right? Hong Kong has become one of the largest asset management centers in Asia. We are also one of the world's largest banking and insurance centers. Now, of course, since all of you are friends of Hong Kong, you know that Hong Kong's success as an international financial center is premised on our core values and fundamental strengths. This includes our heritage of law, of rule of law, underpinned by independent judiciary, clean, efficient government, low and simple tax, a regulatory framework that is on par with international centers. For example, our Securities and Features Commission is recognized as a leading and efficient regulator, and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange is a worthy companion to this regulatory structure. Now, we also cherish our freedoms, including a free and unfettered media and a free flow of ideas and information. Our currency pegged to US dollar has served us very well since 1983. Added to our financial credentials, our political stability, an extremely cost-effective business environment, a critical mass of international investors, and in this day and age, a very important factor, a large pool of experienced financial professionals. And the success of Hong Kong so far underpins also the importance of location. We're situated between London and New York, and this location makes us the bridge for trading activities to be carried out around the clock and around the world, which is why the, uh, the magazine, Time magazine, coined the term Lai Long Kong to, um, to really put Hong Kong alongside London and New York as three of these cities in this global finance. Now, what set Hong Kong apart our, from, our wife, from, our wife, from our rivals is a unique role we play in the economic life of mainland China. As an international financial center located at the heart of Asia with a strong global linkages, Hong Kong provides a premium capital formation and global investment platform for enterprises worldwide. Most important of all, being, a, being both a city in China and Asia's world city, Hong Kong is the best strategic location for being a gateway to mainland China. On the, on the other hand, many mainland companies have set up regional headquarters in Hong Kong as a first step to establish a presence in the international financial market. But our China story is more than just purely location driven. For a long time, we have acted as a facilitator of inward investments of foreign funds into China most recently, we are a center for the Chinese IPOs. As mainland continuous high growth in the past few years, 
has resulted in quick and massive accumulation of wealth. Mainland authorities have progressively allowed financial institutions to invest overseas. Hong Kong has been a major benef beneficiary of the outflow of capital as we are a market that the mainlanders know, trust. They know us culturally, linguistically, linguistically and financially. Hong Kong remains the only jurisdiction outside the mainland in which banks may transact business using the RMB. We also become the first place outside the mainland to operate a, a RMB bond market. All of the above show that Hong Kong is capable of offering unique market opportunities for overseas as well as the mainland issuers. Well, this is how we've done you know, so far. What's a challenge and outlook? Well, in the past few months, of course, we know that the global financial markets have been, have been deeply affected by weakening of market confidence in the soundness and cap capability of the financial system to effectively respond to the aftermath of the subprime crisis. The financial turmoil, we now, the financial tsunami, as I use, as I, I, let me change the term now, well, we, we call it a new term, the tsunami we now face is a global crisis. It hits all the major markets, and there's no exception for Hong Kong. Now, in fact, Hong Kong is no stranger to, to coping with financial crisis. Immediately after the Asian financial crisis, at more than a decade ago, we have been showing up a regulatory system, in particularly strengthening our risk management. For example, Hong Kong is among the first jurisdictions to adopt the risk-based capital adequacy standards for the banking industry and swine in the Basel II starting from January 2007. Over the years, our financial sector has become resilient to, to shocks when compared to other Asian, when compared to the time when we were in a financial crisis in, the, in, the, in 1997. As a result, although our financial markets are unavoidably affected by the repercussions of the subprime crisis and the adverse sentiments arising from that, our financial system has remained stable and has displayed resilience in coping with challenges. A case in point I can point out is how well Hong Kong um, uh, coped with the housing price decline during the last crisis, uh, in the Asian crisis. Our, generally, uh, the index for housing prices fell, I think, from the peak to the bottom, almost 70%. And our banks actually were stable. We coped with that very well because of the very good invest risk management practice at the banks as well as good regulation by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. And, con and, and that regulation and that kind of risk management practice will continue to serve us very well. Now, the collapse of Lehman Brothers has resulted in many investors locally who bought Lehman Brothers related products to suffer investment loss. It's a very unfortunate event. The government realizing that the, minim the Lehman Brothers mini bonds still have value so we immediately coordinated efforts of the regulators, the trustee, and the distributor to assist the, money, the mini bond investors. We have also pledged to undertake a full and comprehensive review to, and to consider on a policy level what can be done to further improve our regulatory regime and enhance investor education and protection. We announced in the policy agenda of 08 and 09 earlier this month that we will launch new initiative this year to strengthen our financial regulatory regime. We will work towards strengthening the supervisory framework for the banks, for the authorized institutions in the banking industry, in order to ensure their reliance to withstand severe market stress and to reinforce Hong Kong's role as an international financial center. The emphasis will be put on the management and enhancement of capital treatment for structural credit and securitization improvement to liquidity risk management and enhancement of risk management capabilities of the banks. Confidence in our financial institutions worldwide has been shaken up in the recent financial turmoil. It has been announced recently that the exchange fund will be used on a special and time-limited basis to guarantee the repayment of all customer deposits held with, 
we've held with all the author authorized institutions in Hong Kong until the end of 2010. The Hong Kong Deposit Protection Board will continue to review the coverage and protection limit of the deposit protection scheme and to provide feasible long-term proposals to enhance protection of depositors. Now, in order to sustain a conducive environment in fostering the growth of legitimate business and investment in Hong Kong, we will embark on a review of our financial systems and the relevant preventive measures with a, with, with a view to strengthening the anti-money laundering and counter-financing counter of terrorism regime in Hong Kong. We believe these are important steps to bolster confidence of depositors and investors in our financial system and to consolidate our leading position in, in the region. On the front of market development, we will press ahead with ongoing efforts to promote market development. Considerable progress has been made in the past year to promote the development of Islamic finance and to advance financial services cooperation with mainland China. In the coming year, we will continue to, various, to rigorously implement market development plans to capitalize on the new opportunities in the region and around the world. For example, we have been continuing to advance financial cooperation with mainland at different levels. In the past year, we have worked towards expanding the presence of Hong Kong financial institutions such as banks, fund management and insurance companies on the mainland under the SIPA framework. We have also encouraged mainland funds, investors and financial institutions to go overseas through Hong Kong by way of the qualified domestic institutional investors, i.e. QDII scheme. The implementation of the mainland QDII scheme in 2007 brought about tremendous business opportunities for the fund management industry. The first QDII fund was launched in September 2007, and so far, Hong Kong has been one of the preferred investment markets for the QD funds. RMB business in Hong Kong has developed steadily since the launch in 2004. We will continue to ensure the smooth operation of RMB business and pursue further expansion of the scheme. In this regard, discussion with relevant mainland authorities on a proposal for the, main, for the Hong Kong importers to settle import trade from the mainland in, the, in RMB is in progress. I hope you have enjoyed my, my, my quick snapshot portrait of our markets, our strength, and our recent challenges and how the government is geared up for developing a broader and deeper and higher quality market. The present financial crisis presents a lot of challenges, but I think it also presents a lot of opportunities. So it's very important for us to both recognize the challenge we have at hand, as well as prepare ourselves to take up those you know, opportunities as they arise. As I, as I really said earlier, I think I look forward to uh, hearing your views and extending, having a discussion, a dialogue uh, with our friends from abroad. And welcome to Hong Kong again. Thank you very much.